All right, so we backed it up a little bit. Um, I just did another video um, doing the same thing in here, but uh, go ahead and copy this guy. Pull, pull one down here. Did the same thing um, a minute ago. Um, but what we did, some of the stuff's all moving around here. Um, we cleaned it all up, all the edges, but we wanted to go ahead and um, come back show you guys um, what we would do say if you were in a tiling situation um, add some more bubbles here and there kind of looks a little bit bland and empty to me still so bear with me here I already had this done but I must have backed up a little bit too far so basically this is all, all I'm doing to, to set this up is just making random circles moving them around Alright, this guy will pop him up here. Copies. Now when you see another one pop up, all I did was copy that that guy and he just disappeared down there. Sometimes carbide creates lovely like that. Now if you make them random, you get different sizes copied, put them up, and move them around a little bit. Just make it look, you know. To each his own, nothing's there's no right or wrong way to do this. Um, I like to even say copy this guy. Oops, well, I double clicked it, so it jumped over there. Copy that guy and stick it right in there. All right, once you get satisfied and you get everything where you want it to get it, um, place it. Now there's one of two things we're going to do. We're going to um, go ahead and do an operation to clean all these uh, bubbles and make them fit inside the box. And then something else that we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and make sure that if we were to tile this, um, we're set on a, I think it's a 25 by 24 inch profile right now. So if you wanted to tile it to say um, 50 by 24 uh, there was another user doing something very similar to this just in the forum so I figured I'd go ahead and uh, shoot a quick video and explain to people how it might be done a little bit better in person um, I know there's some visual learners out there and that's how some of us things just click a little bit better sometimes when we get a visual Now you can get, I can get crazy with this. My eye just keeps, oh, what about this circle over here? What about one over here? You can, you can have as much fun with doing all that as you want. Um, I'm going to try to keep it as simple as I can for now. Um, that looks pretty, pretty good to me. Alright, so first things first, um, getting these things lined up for doing a tiling operation before we go ahead and clean them up. What you would want to do is, since you're gonna you're gonna take everything and flip it, you're gonna basically copy it like so, and then you're gonna flip it up this way, and you want all these to line up just like this, or kind of sort of you get you get the gist, but you want these these to mirror each other. So what we're gonna do. And get rid of that. As we're gonna go ahead and line these up, we're gonna get the center, and we're gonna click and drag that down there. We're gonna get the center of this guy. Just hit one of these nodes. Doesn't have to be perfect. Just get it on the center line. Um, same thing with each one. As you can see, just that little bit of uh, off center will really make a big difference. And you know, I kind of want to make this one just a little bit bigger. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to upscale in maybe 25%, 1.25. Apply that. I like that. All right. So this last guy, bring him up to center. Move him right about there. Maybe we'll take this guy and move him up over here. Oh, I need something else down here. So let's take another one of you. 
There we go. Might as well throw on maybe over here. Something over here. Like I said, I get kind of crazy with, with it. Um, I could keep going. But uh, this is the gist of things. So now that we have this all lined up, and we mirror everything, so we're going to copy this once again. We're going to control copy, control C. And we're going to do the, the mirror image once again, vertical flip. And if we line everything up, it should be pretty clean. See there? Now, you can leave this like this if you'd like. I prefer to actually take this back out here. We're going to delete this. And we're going to go ahead and clean up the perimeter here now. Now, when you do this perimeter, so we're going to say we're going to do our square, our rectangle. We know our width is 24 inches and our height is 25. That's how we're going to set up the tiling job. So we're just going to click and drag this down here on the corner. Everything should line up. All right, now once you do your Boolean operations, you're gonna have to do them one at a time. Usually have this guy selected. Um, now we have Boolean union, we have Boolean intersection, and we have a Boolean subtraction. We're gonna wanna use a Boolean uh, intersection today. It's gonna go ahead and clean things up just like that. Um, cut the edge off on the, on the side. Now if you were to use a Boolean union, it's gonna go ahead and do the exact opposite of what we want to do and the same thing with the subtraction is going to get rid of everything and make that bubble exactly exactly the opposite on the outside of our workpiece so we're going to go ahead and, and do the intersections and that gives us what we want now as you can see when I did that the outside box went away now if you try to do this each and every one at the same time. Let's see here. It's not going to allow you to do a Boolean intersection. You can only do Boolean subtractions and unions. So we're going to have to do each and every one of these individually. So a way to get around this and kind of speed things up is what I would do is I would make um, as many boxes that are going to be deleted in the process and then add one for our final perimeter box so that way when we're all done we have all these guys cut on the inside of the box and then we have one left over because each time we do the boolean intersection one is erased so we're, let's go ahead and count our, our circles here we got one two three four this one stays on the inside so we got five six seven eight nine ten and 11. Now just to check one more time, we got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, look at that. We never counted this one. So always double check. Um, no matter what you do, you're setting your, your speeds and your feeds, double check things because you never know when you might miss something. Um, so what we're going to go ahead and do is we're going to make Uh, 11 boxes, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, we're going to make 10 more boxes, so we're going to copy it once, and then put it on top, copy it again, that's 3, and then we got 4 boxes, 5, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven boxes, and I think we need one extra, right? So twelve. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and then we want one extra around. So that makes a total of twelve boxes. All right. So we're going to go ahead and select our circle holding the shift key and then select one of the boxes on the outside. Do Boolean intersection and it cleans it up. And we're just going to go ahead and repeat this one at a time all the way around. 
one at a time. Boolean intersection. So by the time you're done with this, hopefully you know when you come up to an operation, you're like, oh, I need a Boolean intersection. It's going to do what I want. That's the goal. This, this is all about Boolean intersection. It's all we're going to use today. Once again, I'm holding the shift key each time um, I'm selecting multiple vectors. So if I select the circle, I'm holding shift before I select the outside perimeter. And that lets me do what I want. Um, what's going on here? There we go. Remember, Boolean intersection is what you must have in the middle here, or else it's not going to work. If you have multiple vectors, multiple circles selected, um, which is what happened a second ago, we still had this one over here selected, and we tried to select one over here. didn't give us the option. So just make sure you click the background if you have to. Because like right here, if you were to go to the next one, you're going to click the background to reset things. All right. So that looks all nice, it's all cleaned up. So what we're going to go ahead and demonstrate is if you were to tile this. So what I would do is I would go ahead and copy the whole entire workpiece. And we're going to do a vertical flip. And then if you notice, if we carry it all the way down here on the bottom, everything lines up perfectly. So if you were to go ahead and cut this first operation right here, and then you slid that through your machine and you had had the the stock long enough and you slid that through you made your marks or whatever and you secure it at the exact same point on the next batch you would do this reverse carve this way otherwise if you wanted to go ahead and mill it this way and keep it in the same direction you would take your stock out and flip it around if that makes sense but I would honestly I would keep everything going in one direction if you're gonna do a tiling effort set it up like this so that way all you've got to do is you come in here you set your toolpath let's go ahead and grab this guy down here to set our toolpath now I got told I was working too fast, so on this video I try to work as slow as I can. So um, we're going to delete that. All right. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to do a contour. We got a 201 bit selected. I'm going to go ahead and set it down so that we have an onion skin layer at the end. So 0 0.120, so that we just have a 05 at the end, five thousandths of an inch. So we're going to leave all the speeds. We're going to do a pocket operation. And sometimes it renders, sometimes it doesn't inside there. I like to give it a second to catch up. Oh, computer's running a little slow today, and so it's because I'm uploading another video in the background, but all right. So this is what we're left with. So now, if you were to go ahead and save this, save this toolpath like this, um, you can go ahead and save the G code if you wanted to. Um, you'd come back over here to design. Then you could just basically um, select this that you just had, move it out of the way, bring this one back up into its place. Again, you could even save uh, save the files completely um, differently. You could come up here and do save as save as table bubble table top one here, save as bubble table top tile two here, um, and then you just come back in here to your toolpath. As you can see, our original toolpath is still over here. We can move this if you'd like, just to kind of show you what the whole tiling effort would be. 
move this up here so now we're going to select this whole bottom area and we're going to set the toolpath for it so same thing we're going to do quarter inch end mill set it to 0.12 and leave everything else the same and we're going to do a pocket operation at an eighth of an inch depth now when you do the simulation it's not going to show the whole entire table because um, there's only so much background image um, when you do the simulation your background is your stock so we can't necessarily make that whole thing like that but as you can see right here everything would line up perfectly as long as as long as when you move your workpiece on your machine for the next tile if you get it in the right exact spot need to set yourself some pinholes or do something, some sort of clamping mechanism. You guys got to figure that one out. But um, whatever you use and decide to do, this is going to be your outcome. Now the only thing that you might want to change is this right here. These edges are going to kind of um, protrude out. You might have a might have a cut through here, honestly. Um, but if you can if you can set it out correctly, you should be you should be all right. Because your machine's not going to no, you should be fine. Because your machine's going to cut in here, cut in here. It's not going to come to the outside. Sorry about that. I got in my own head for a second. Call it a brain part. But I hope you guys learned something. Um, and this whole effort, you can see it did cut off the other side, but in the simulation there with all the um, with all the tool paths still set, it would be a perfect flawless uh, finish. Well, for some reason, that one's gone. Hm. Oh well. But all right, guys, I'm gonna cut it short. I'm sorry, I kind of rambled on at the end there. But you guys get the get the picture. Hopefully it helped you guys from start to finish on every step that we did. Hopefully it was slow enough for you guys and um, gave you guys time to kind of keep up. You know, I'm not trying to you know call you guys slow, but just give, gives you guys time to keep up with what I'm doing because I know I can tend to do things a little bit fast and not show my work. Problem since grade school. All right, signing out. Have a good night, guys. Thank you.